Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we're going to look at the 10 games that got the best scores on the channel for last month for the month of August. We reviewed 14 games on the channel last month so of course 4 games haven't made the cut but what I will do is put the links to all 14 reviews in the top pinned comment if you want to have a look at any of the games we reviewed in more detail. We'll start with the game that got the lowest score and of course make our way up to the game that got the highest score for the month and obviously for a game to appear on this list we need to have reviewed it so just bear that in mind if there is a game that you believe should have been on here chances are we didn't get round to it. So what were the 10 best scoring games for the month of August on the channel? Well, let's find out. So there are 10 games to go through, but a few of them are tied scores. So in joint seven plays for the month was our most recent review actually, and that was Rustler. This is a top-down open world sandbox game, very much in the style of the early Grand Theft Auto games. The difference here is that this game has a medieval setting with modern references thrown in and the humour has a very heavy sprinkling of Monty Python. You'll be attempting missions stealing horses rather than cars and using weapons such as spears, swords and a crossbow and there is a skill tree system to allow you to customise your character to a degree. It's classic late 90s GTA and whilst the controls are a little awkward and there were some slight performance issues which made the price of £24.99 seem perhaps a tad high, it's definitely a fun game nonetheless and it got a switch up score of 76%. Also in 7th place then, this was Mayhem Brawler. This is a beat em up with a hand drawn art style that states it took inspiration from the arcade games of the 1990s. Whilst this is clearly evident, I would say it's a console series in Streets of Rage that it seems to have been inspired the most by. Even that hand drawn art style is so similar to Streets of Rage 4, all the way down to the walking animations. That being said though it is an enjoyable time and it does introduce a condition system and they are basically afflictions that can affect either you or the enemies in positive or negative ways. Perhaps by way of health regeneration or a bleed effect that means that you constantly lose health. It's a novel approach but it does cause some balancing issues in particular levels and it doesn't really enhance the game, at least in my opinion. If you do like your beat em ups like me, there are a lot of very good ones on the Switch and if this one goes on sale you could do a lot worse. It of course also got a switch up score of 76%. In joint 6th place was Fort Triumph. This strategy role playing game has been referred to as a mix of XCOM and Heroes of Might and Magic but does have a few unique ideas of its own. A physics based combat system allows for you to use your surroundings to inflict damage on your foes via environmental hazards and there is an interesting base building system too. It offers a number of different gameplay modes plus permadeath that can be toggled on or off and it is very good value for the price that you are paying. On the more negative side it does have a bit of a mobile look to it for want of a better term with some assets recycled quite often but then in other areas such as the soundtrack the production values are extremely high. Well worth a look if you like turn based strategy and it got a switch up score of 80%. Again then in joint 6th place was Banners of Ruin. This is a deck building game which released elsewhere back in 2020 and is now available on the Switch. Once you get on board with the basics and there is a very helpful tutorial to enable you to do just this, you'll find that the combat is extremely engaging and very addictive. The lore is told through text and perhaps some narration could have elevated things further but to be fair, aside from this minor niggle, the audio is absolutely stellar and gives a real sense of danger as you play. The visuals are suitably grimy with the anthropomorphic animals looking good but there is a lack of variety which is a little disappointing. Fans of deck builders will absolutely love it and it may even convert those who have always been curious about the genre. It got a switch up score of 80%.
Coming in in fifth place for the month was Dreamscaper. This roguelike has been inspired by some of the greats of the genre and you can certainly see the influence of games such as the Binding of Isaac and Hades running through it. This is most certainly not a bad thing though as it uses these influences to craft something that is very polished with incredibly slick combat and that's all important addictive and compelling gameplay loop. The roguelike element of the game takes place in the player's lucid dreams with a lot of different rooms to explore and then a boss to fight with a layout very similar to the binding of Isaac as I said. There are a host of weapons to find and this is where the game starts to lean more towards Hades. The different runs or playthroughs that you go on are explained as the dreams of the character which leads to a little more exposition being given every time you go on one, making each run feel worthwhile. The visuals and the audio in particular are striking and the core gameplay works very well. The overworld sections are perhaps not quite as coherent and there is a lack of variety in enemy types but fans of roguelites will have a very good time. It got a switch up score of 82%. In joint 4th place this month was one of the games that dropped immediately after the Indie Direct and that's Islanders. This is a minimalist city builder that sells for a very reasonable price of around £5 or your regional equivalent and it most certainly offers a lot of enjoyment for such a fee. You build your city by basically attempting to put compatible buildings next to each other. This will then give you points and you lose points for having buildings near each other which aren't as good a fit. A very simple idea but a very engaging one as you try to use up every last piece of available space to gain as many points as you can. It's simple yet addictive and has a very relaxing atmosphere. Perhaps not a huge amount of depth but then for the price you are paying you can't really complain and it got a switch up score of 83%. The other 4th place game for the month was Haven Park. This was another cheap but very relaxing game, although this one is quite different to Islanders and has more in common in some ways to indie favourite A Short Hike. You take control of a small bird who must maintain a campsite by travelling around the park and building each new area up using a variety of items that can be crafted from materials found in the game world. In this respect it has a little bit of Animal Crossing about it and it all comes together really well. It only takes around 3-4 to four hours to finish, perhaps a bit longer if you really do take your time, but it will be a very calming and enjoyable few hours and it got a switch up score of 83%. In third place for the month was a game called Greek Memories of Azure. This is an action platformer but also has a heavy emphasis on puzzle solving. You control three siblings and use their unique abilities to traverse the environment and solve the aforementioned puzzles. In this regard it has a strong vibe of games like Trine or a personal favourite of mine from back in the day being the Lost Vikings. It has a lovely aesthetic and the puzzles are well thought out. The negatives come from the control system in terms of moving more than one character at one time which can be a bit clunky and the seemingly odd omission of a co-op mode in a game with three playable characters. Still a great game and it got a switch up score of 84%. In second place then was Ace Attorney Chronicles. This is a collection of two games, both of which released for the 3DS and never made it outside of Japan back in the day. They are set in the 1800s and take place in Japan and England with stories that are both interesting and well written as you would expect from this particular series. The gameplay will be instantly recognisable to anyone who has played an entry in the series before with it being split into trials and investigation sections. Trials will see you questioning witnesses or those accused of a crime and trying to pick holes in their story, whereas investigation sections are where you scour for evidence. 
The package itself is great value and it's just a shame that the physical version won't make its way to Europe as seems to be the case more often than not these days with Capcom but that aside it got a switch up score of 89%. And in first place for the month was No More Heroes 3. Many people had been eagerly anticipating Travis Touchdown's third proper outing and having finally arrived, we were delighted to say that it had very much been worth the wait. Being as ridiculously over the top in terms of action and as gripping in terms of the crazy story as the previous entries, it's also how satisfying the combat feels that makes this game so engaging. The number of combos keeps things flowing nicely and the ranked battles were where things really shone. Perhaps the jobs within the chapters got a little samey but this was a minor quibble and the game is definitely worthy of anyone's Switch collection, it got a Switch up score of 90%. So there you have it, there are the 10 best scoring games for the month of August. As I said, there were 14 reviews in total. The four games that didn't quite make this list were AO the Clown, Foreclosed, King's Bounty 2 and Monster Harvest. The links to those four reviews and the 10 featured in this list are in the top in comment as I said if you do want the full story. Did you pick any of these games up? Did you enjoy them? Was there anything else that you bought in the month of August that you want to shout out in the comments section? Please feel free and let everyone else know about a potential gem they may have missed out on. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.